Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. There's no doubt that equaliser was clearly offside. Oh, sorry, the first incident. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry, yeah. sorry. I thought you meant it. Yeah, I mean, listen. There's nobody a bigger advocate than myself for goal line technology. Uh, every time I've asked, I clearly state it. I think the sooner it's brought in, the better. Uh, I think we all seen what happened to England in the World Cup in the Germany game. Uh, for my own part, it's happened to us a couple of times earlier in the season, at home to Chelsea. And I could totally understand Mark and Queen's Park Rangers' frustration with the fact that Clint Hill's headers clearly over the line. Uh, having said that, I've got to applaud my uh, goalkeeper, Adam Bogdan, because it was a, such a wonderful palm out. But there's no doubt it's clearly over the line. Uh, but from our part, yeah, of course, we got we got a break there. Uh, we'd started the game really well. My disappointment was I think that was only the, the second time Queen's Park Rangers had been up the park in the game that, uh, and we could have defended the corner better. Having said that, we then got in front with a well-worked uh, free kick. Uh, took it short, passed it across the box. Tim Ream steps in the left, and, and Dan Prattley, which we brought him in the team to do it, be a goal scoring midfielder, pops up with a wonderful header. So, again, we were looking to start the second half well, and uh, we've been undone with a uh, clearly offside goal. As good a finish as it was from a top player, you know, but if you spend whatever it was, I don't know, 15, 20 million pounds in January, you're going to bring quality to your club. And, and Mark Hughes has done that in the shape of CC and Zamora and Diakiti and, and such forth. I mean, these are top players. Uh, but we stood up to anything we had. And the great thing for us today was with 15 minutes to go, we believed it was a game to be won. And, and as a manager, you know, sometimes your substitutions come off, sometimes they don't. But we were more positive than, than what we'd already been with two natural wingers in the pitch and, uh, and, and go through the middle and two attack-minded field, midfielders. We sent Klasnich on and he does what he does best. Sublime skill from uh, Rio Miachi. Again, he was terrific and he, he only gets better, that kid. And a great way to pass. And when Klasnich goes one and one with a goalkeeper, there's only th one thing going to happen in that situation, and it's a wonderful finish. So, all in all, absolutely delighted. I think it takes it out of the bottom three. And as I said, we, we always were confident that, that we could do that. But yeah, again, one swallow doesn't make a summer. We have to kick on and, and use that as a platform in the remaining 10 games. Yeah, I mean, well, no, I mean, I think you have to give balance to it. It's not like a chance. It's Lee Evans uh, played in the team uh, and for most part of, well he did, he started all the games I think up to uh, the turn of the year and we'd been scoring goals and, and Ivan is our top goal scorer but equally we'd been conceding goals because we were maybe too open and we decided to concede one of our main strikers and play an extra man in midfield and we reaped the rewards of that and of course Ivan's frustrated by that. David Ngo plays that position ever so well, he was outstanding today again as he, and he's a young player, it only gets better. So, of course, I totally understand. Not only Ivan, Fabrice Moamba, Chris Eagles, Kevin Davis, they'll all have been frustrated that night not to be in the starting 11. But that's what you need a squad for. And what I've said is, when they get their chance, they have to be prepared to take it. And Ivan stepped in today and, and been a match winner, which is fantastic.